Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Hey guys, I am recording on my trip and this is a video on the reaction to Apple's WWDC 2014. Wow. Wow. So yeah, that happened. Um, and as I told everyone, there's no way Apple would release a product during this launch. And I wanted to address that first, simply for the fact that a lot of people overestimate what Apple can do. Oh, they can do this, they can do... They don't produce anything. They rely on everyone else to produce their products. Companies like Samsung, LG are busy doing their own products right now. They would not work on an iOS device at this time. And this is what I always try to tell people, but uh, again, people always believe that Apple can do anything, and they can't. So, they added some things. Yeah, um, it really, it really, this WWDC made it more clear to me of how Apple is really still catching up to Android and uh, to Google uh, specifically, because um, not only um, was it on iOS, but it really was an OS X as well. Uh, so for OS X, uh, Yosemite is codename, they have a Spotlight, which is like Google Now, it's pretty much a ripoff of Google Now, uh, where basically anything you type in, you're going to searching, and it'll give you like info cards and everything like that. It, it, it looked almost like Google Now. I was like, wow. Um, and there's my phone going off with the Google Now phrase. Um, iCloud Drive is pretty much exactly like Google Drive. Even their uh, mail drop attachment is just like when you send a a Gmail using your Google Drive. It it's just like they they're literally just taking from what Google's already done and accomplished and now putting it on their own. Finally, uh they're making and receiving calls. Again, this is something that Google Voice has been able to do and you can use for since a long, long time ago. Even if you want to use third parties and not use Google, you can always use ones like uh one I use is Mighty Text for my text messages. And I've always been able to text message anyone, no matter what phone they have, from my computer. And I think this is a really, again, just a, a matter of um, iOS marketing themselves as innovative and everything that they describe about OS X pretty much wasn't. Um, and we have, uh, so now iOS, okay? Uh, two really things I wanted to point out was two statistics that Apple used, which I found hilarious. Uh, one, 99% of malware is on Android, yet 99.7% of malware doesn't come from the Play Store. This is something that I always tell people, you do not need apps like Lookout, you do not need any kind of internet security on Android whatsoever. It's just such BS about how they talk about malware on Android, and yet it's non-existent as long as you buy apps from the Play Store. If you buy apps from the Play Store, you can't get out malware on Android. Plain and simple. Um, second, they said 98% of the Fortune 500 uh, uses iOS, meaning 98% of the Fortune 500 use, makes an app for iOS. It doesn't say exclusively an app. By the way, it means just they, they make an app. But again, this sounds really impressive. Oh, 98% of the Fortune 500 uses iOS. Yes, well, it doesn't really matter. They just made an app for it. And an app that is also most likely on Android as well. So... Um, now, about iOS. Uh, what revolutionary things did we see in iOS 8 after the debacle of iOS 7? Uh, well, there was some interesting things and some really, I, I can't believe iOS still didn't have that things. Uh, the first thing is, is finally, I know uh, so many people, so first of all, they announced a quick type feature, which is kind of like if it's reading your text message and the information that is going on, so if someone asked dinner in a movie, it would say, oh, do you want to uh, autocorrect dinner or a movie? But then, as soon as they announced that, no one even cared, because now you can actually add third-party keyboards, something you've been able to do on Android since the beginning of Android. Um, so they finally have it, though, 2014. We've had it since 2008. But, you know, it's catching up. Um, so you have that. Um, you have interactive notifications, which is basically... You get an email or a text message, you can like reply right there. Um, you can do the same thing on Android, you do a two finger pull down on any notification and then you just do what you need to do. 
So reply to it, delete the email, delete the text message, or expand on it um, there. And uh, the biggest thing in the notifications was that they talked about um, widgets. So what Apple considers a widget is essentially um, a Google Now uh, style on their on their device. So what they consider a widget is basically cards like this. So you can see like cards, so like you know uh, on news, on sports teams, on stocks, all that kind of stuff. This is what they are considering to be widgets, which I find very humorous. I'm like, th those aren't widgets. Did you just want to say you have widgets on iOS 8? And that's why you're calling it those? Those aren't widgets. Um, so I found that to be very uh, misleading because like the crowd went crazy as soon as you said widgets and then when they discovered what they were, they're like, but, oh, okay, but those aren't widgets. So that was uh, something that I found very, very interesting. Um, now a couple of things, uh, the, the one, one interesting thing that I did find kind of cool was that when you use the multitask button on iOS, so say like the equivalent of this on Android, um, you can actually go um, and put in your favorite contacts. Now that's pretty cool. On the Galaxy S5, I can do something similar to that with one-handed operation, and I have um, nine favorite contacts on the side right there. So these are things that, again, have been done, but cool, and that, that one I, I, I actually really do give credit to. Uh, Spotlight is just like something called S Finder that's been on uh, Samsung since the Note 3. Uh, that basically uh, can search your phone and the internet. And that's Spotlight, which I thought iOS could do that before, if I wasn't mistaken, but I, they went on about it that it was a bigger deal, so I don't really didn't see that much impressive uh, for it iCloud Drive, of course, again, you can store things on your drive and it's, you know, in the cloud, which again, you could do that always on Google Drive, so I, I didn't really see the impression of that, and you can, you know, third-party apps have been using it for a while, all this has been available. Uh, family sharing. Family sharing, first of all, no one will ever turn family sharing on for photo streaming, ever. That is insane. There is no teenager out in the world they want every photo they take to be seen by their parents. You're insane. And vice versa, by the way. Parents take photos that I'm sure they don't want their kids seeing. So that's worthless. Uh, family reminders is, eh, depends on how close the family is, I guess. Um, you know, for like a shopping thing, I could see that kind of like, oh, remember we need milk or something like that. A lot of third-party apps do the same thing, but it's integrated into iOS now. Uh, calendars, again, um, you just invite people through calendars through Gmail. I don't see that as that big of a difference. Uh, and, and that way you, it's more selective, than, and they don't have to be in your family. Um, and kids asking for permission um, for, to buy an app, I think that's probably the best feature. So uh, two cool features so far on iOS. Uh, kids asking for permission and uh, the quick uh, access to key people, as they put it. Smart photo editing did not look that impressive at all. The best photo editor I have seen on a phone for basic users is by far on the Galaxy S5. That one just blew. Everything that you could do on the iOS one, you could do better on the Galaxy S5 one. And more. Uh, hey Siri was one of the big other features that you can say, like I can say, okay Google, and it'll unlock on my phone. You can do that with, as you see, hey Siri. Um, and the problem with that is, though, you can only do it while it's charging. You cannot do it at any other point. It has to be while it's charging. So that's a limitation. And finally, uh, apps can now be in bundles, which I find that one kind of be cool. So, like, if Gameloft wanted to, you know, bundle their top four games, they could do that. Uh, so that's, uh, again, the one that I see is more useful than others. Um, health kit honestly looks ugly compared to um, S Health, in my opinion. I, I just didn't find it that impressive. Obviously, this was kind of a preview, so we'll see what it looks like when it comes out, but it didn't look that impressive. Um, and the home automation system, look, everyone's getting into that. Android got into that last year, um, so we're, we're seeing how it's developing. Uh, my friend does home automations, and I mean, they look great when you can set it up, but I like, I, I think that. I don't know how great of a service that's going to be 
Um, most likely with Siri integration, I think they're going to take over pretty well with that, but um, that one's going to be an interesting one to see. Uh, so yeah, these are going to be the main features that I would say stood out. What did you think of Apple? Was there anything worthwhile that they announced that you're just like wowed about? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, thanks for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy.